Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. Terry and Mags are, are joining me. I am Jerry, and if you didn't know that by now, sorry to break the news to you. Uh, so, guys, let's talk uh, AGM. Uh, Max started last time. Terry, you can get us get us going. Um, I feel like this this AGM was headlined by the big news that uh, Papa Marcel is on the board now. Mm -hmm. That's that's the all the main headlines that I saw. People people seemed happy about this. Yeah, I mean, we as supporters don't really know the difference it'll make, but I do not. <laughs> no, I don't, but it, there's a couple of things that go into it which give people a sort of positive feeling about it. Is a that's the way it's done uh, in Europe when you get a sporting director, as director of football, whatever you want to call it, in European clubs in Germany and whatnot. They are members of the board. They they are the man who's in charge of everything football related at the club, and we hadn't done that. We just sort of positioned them as like, yeah, you're an employee of the club, the same as the manager. But um, you're sort of alongside the manager and sort of above him at the same time. It's not very clear. But now there's very clear, distinct sort of hierarchy. Marcel Brands is on the board. He's in charge of the whole football operation of the club. And ultimately he will make the big decisions now about players coming in, players going out, new managers, if that come, becomes a thing. I'm sure it will be under his tenure at some point, for good reasons or for bad. And... Uh, B, secondly, um, it's a sort of good indicator that he's that, that behind the scenes he's doing a better job than um, Steve Walsh because I'm certain at some point um, Walsh, um, Mashiri said of Walsh that he was there was plans for him to go on the board eventually and obviously they never happened because his performance wasn't good enough and I'm sure that wasn't uh, any different behind the scenes as well. So that got a... There was a pin put in those plans, and then he obviously lost his job. So this is sort of like a nod that Marcel Brands is doing a good enough job and impressing the right people enough that the club have trusted him to be. Basically, he's taken over what Bill Kenwright traditionally would have done. He would have been the old model, which um, this season, famously, Man United was still operating on of a chief executive and a manager, or an, a chairman and a manager, where the chairman negotiates everything at the manager's uh, request. Whereas now. Directors of football sort of mastermind the philosophy, the identity of the whole club from under tens through to the senior team, everything. So if he's got a handle on things, which this indicates that he has, I think we can only be happy about that. And I think that's what everyone's reaction was. It's a good sign that things are going well behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean we we can tell things on the surface. You know, we we look at look at transfers. We we, we feel like there's a. Uh, you know, he he always tends to say the right things when he's when he's when he's interviewed, and I, I think we look at we look at all that. And we're thinking, okay, there's a guy that's that's a director of football. It's someone who's uh, that's what the person's supposed to be doing. This is what we had in mind when they brought someone to do that job before, you know. Um, and on the surface, we're thinking, okay, he's doing good, but it's just nice. It's comforting that you know they're thinking, oh, you know what, he is. We agree with everybody else. And we're seeing it behind the scenes. And let's give him more power. Let's give him more decision-making ability. And that's comforting. That's that's nice, you know. Um, and this comes on the heels of these ridiculous rumors ahead of time that he was going to be suspended <laughs> because of supposedly tapping up players or something. Yeah, there was rumors all over Twitter that he was going to be suspended before that. And then they were like, no, he's on the board, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just funny how how that kind of stuff happens. Uh, he got a lot of support from Mashiri during the AGM. Um, there were some other highlights about AGM, you know, where they talk about uh, the we're supposed to have a spade in the ground at Bramley Moor in 2020. Uh, Brands Bronze playing down the January window. Uh, Denise got to talk for a while. Uh, Max. What was something that really stuck out for you in terms of you know, when you were going over the all the different highlights of it? You thought, okay, that's an important thing to mention. Um, yeah, I just want to comment on on Marcel Brands being appointed to the board. I think into uh, into Everton as a footballing entity have minimised risk entirely. I think by appointing Marcel Brands as you know as chief of football operations, 
I think that's a very smart move. And like like Terry said, and it's something that Denise Barrett Baxendale mentioned when she was interviewed. Brands seem to have a vision that he wants the under the under twenty ones, the under eighteen, the kids to play the same brand of football as the first team. It, it seems very Johan Cruyff, La Masaya esque, which is something that I admire highly because. You know, in terms of Marcel Brand's man mindset, he's he's here for the long haul. Continuity is something that is is, is that he's factored in, um, and the fact that he wants to be that man at the helm for the next few years for Everton is absolutely fantastic. And what it does do as well is it it takes a bit, it takes away some of the responsibility from below him and above him. So Mar- Mar- Marco Silva will be reporting to Marcel Brand's. And obviously, it frees up a bit of responsibility for Bill Kenwright, etc. And I think that's a huge step for us as a club as a whole because, you know, obviously that era under Kenwright and Moyes, we never really had a football and brain to to kind of blueprint a, any sort of avenues to success. And we've seen that from PSV and uh, Alkmaar with brands that he knows what he's on about. Um, and in terms of Denny's better backs in there, as I said earlier, I've, I couldn't. I can't really speak highly enough of her since she's been appointed as the chief exec. You know, she she's on side with the fans, which a lot of the previous chief execs weren't. Um, it, she's got a clear plan, as I said. She said she will be in position to compete in three years' time. Mentioned the likes of the Champions League and the Premier League, which I'm sure fans will take a lot of encouragement from. Um, which is great. Um, Machiri as well. The fact that his back and his, you know. Unfounded that what's it now two hundred and fifty million that he's invested, not always been wisely spent, but I'm sure that will absolve itself with brands being in the position that he is now. Some of that money will be, you know, recovered and spent in a in a wiser way. So Max, uh, Mashiri had some inter- interesting comments about uh, where we're where the club's at right now in terms of the league standing. Um, What's your take on that? 11th isn't good enough, like he said, and that's very right. And it's a relief to hear after after hearing terms bandied about last season, such as, as expected losses. Um, yeah. to, to, to hear him say now, you know, the fans expect success. It sounds sort of something a lot similar to a quote that came from John Moores years ago, which is true. We do expect success, and where we are at the moment isn't good enough. I don't necessarily agree. That Teddy mentioned it there that you know he come out with the term he spent he's invested money from turning a museum into a competitive outfit. I wouldn't label us as a competitive outfit outfit just yet um, until we've actually achieved Europe or silverware. That's when I'd, I'd, I'd come out with that. But yeah, it, it, it's it's looking good in terms of from a bit from a business perspective. We're, you know, we've got to reiterate we are on the up. We've had our setbacks, but we're we're slowly crawling in the right direction off the pitch. And with the appointment of Brands as, as as you know, commander of football operations, surely on the pitch now we'll start seeing improvements. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. He Mashiri threw a lot of support behind Marcel Brands. And, and there was a certain amount of support for Silva, where you talk about standing behind the manager and everything. However, it wasn't the same exact amount of support. It was kind of like still leaving it open like, look, if this doesn't get better, you know, Silva is not beyond being replaced. Uh, but he didn't say that, thank God. Because <laughs> heck of an AGM if he does. Uh, <laughs> Terry... Um, it's interesting. We've got Silva in here, and he's playing a certain brand of, of football. And Max, you were talking about uh, him bringing that bronze, wanting to bring the same type of football, the same brand of football throughout the academy. It's got to be tough. It's almost like you got to think about having the same blueprint for a manager every time. Then, don't you? If you end up getting a new manager, otherwise you're, you're having to shift gears with your academy. Every f- few years, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's they need to be an identical type of manager. I just think they want to imprint a sort of wider um, sort of DNA into the club. So you mm-hmm. can't look. I think Mashiri has learned lessons from his previous uh, years in charge. I mean, 
look how wildly we've swung between different types of managers and it hasn't you know in the very short time that he's been here so he's obviously thinking a I don't want to be doing that again where I go from yeah Cumin to Allardyce and then to Silver. It's like and some of the players work for some and some work for others. It needs to be a broad sort of like style and a broad sort of um, um, sort of philosophy on the club. Not we have to play this way, but for example, um, we touched on it in a previous segment. If Silver was to go um, either this season, next season, whenever. There's going to be a certain type, a certain mould of manager like an Eddie Howe, someone like that who would fit rather than another, you know, more conservative manager like a Sean Dyche. We're just mm. bringing up names that we were linked with last time. Maybe it won't be them. Mm. Marcel Brand's been put in charge to, he'll probably be taking that decision and he might know someone from um, across Europe who'd fit that, that mould. But you don't have to reset everything with a change of manager, which is what we've done previously. And I think as well, Mishiri's comments on the um, on the eleventh place being unacceptable and the change in the um, museum into a competitive outfit. I think he's starting to think now. I've this is Mishiri. I've spent a lot of money already, and I've not got a lot for it. It's been badly spent. It's been badly managed, and now I feel that I've put the man in place who's going to look after my. A, my club and A, my investment because I don't think he minds investing but he can't be happy with what he's seen so far. He's put a lot of money in. Whether he gets that back you know, is yet to be seen. It's a, but it's a lot in and we've not improved dramatically but I think now he thinks, well, I've got a director of football in place to manage that and manage it properly. Just, you know, we won't have a repeat of the mess of last season. And I think he does support Marco Silva, but he's obviously <clears> learned again from his other experiences not to get too closely tied, at least publicly, to a manager because he knows how quickly that position can change. Yeah, mm. I think that's that's very wise. And something else that Mashiri mentioned, I think it was Mashiri, where he was talking about uh, in order to fill a 62,000-person stadium, we have to play a certain type of... Of football and I think that's very telling talking about you know the idea the concept when you're if we if for some reason we ever had to replace Silva it will be a certain type of manager so the, the hope is we regardless of how bad things get it will still that fo- footballing philosophy we we're talking about so it's less of a style and more of a philosophy which I think makes yeah, because he was talking about a certain brand. Yeah, I I think from here forward, the, you know, the football that we'll see will be the Marcel Brand style of football. I think it will be sustainable and I think it will be progressive. And I think in the years to come, we won't find ourselves in situations where we'll have so many players that have come in from one manager, so many players that have come in from another manager where it'll clash. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you, you've seen these comments that are coming out from Vlasic where... You know where he where some of the some of the things that he said that you know you can't even call the yeah. stuff that we were playing football. You can't have you know if you want to be a sustainable top six football club <laughs> and a good international brand, things like that just can't come out about your club. So I think obviously it's a step in the right direction, saying that you want to implement this style of football. Uh, and yeah, fingers crossed, we won't have any money, any more monstrosities in terms of player recruitment like we have in the past. Man United, yeah, sh- oh, sorry, go ahead, Terry. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Man United have done it on a much larger scale and done it the way we had done it. And they've got a mixture of players from different managers who don't have a, a sort of common thread running through them for style and philosophy. And look how much it's affecting them. It's it, They're like the problems we had last season, they, they've got that several fold worse. And that's what we yeah. want to get away from. We want to sort of have. So I hate to say it, but the Tottenham approach, we, we, we you know, uh, not Tottenham haven't been better than us for very long, but they, they clearly are now. But if Tottenham were to lose Pochettino, which they probably will soon, they're going to have a clear idea of what type of manager they want to come in to manage that squad, and it'll just mm-hmm. continue rolling on. It won't be a complete reset. You won't see Antonio Conte go into Chelsea uh, to Tottenham when um, Pochettino goes because it just won't fit. So yeah. I think he establish that that oh, shoot me for saying this that Everton way he wants to establish that 
the Everton way his own version of it because we've not had it since he's been here. But Martinez, we've had Koeman, we've had Allardyce, total mismatch of managers and total mismatch of players. Marcel's here to sort that out, short term and long term. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the focus on the long term seems it's highly emphasized when he speaks. You know, he's rarely does he talk about immediate, which is one of the reasons why he downplayed the January window because there's not good value in the January window. You know, um, so yeah, really curious to see how the next couple of weeks go uh, and if we if we do make uh, bring any players in. Because we, we have sent some out on loan. Um, and I know technically Dowell was a first-team player. So is this a situation where we're going to replace him? Would that be one in, one out? You know, I don't know. I have no idea because we still I, – I, my impression the whole time when Dowell was with the team was that he was going to be backing up Sigurdsson. You know, uh, and now he's not there. So, yeah, really curious to see how – or because he hasn't specifically said we're not bringing anybody in January. Because I'm really – you can analyze what he's doing there. He's, you know, kind of keeping keeping uh, keeping us in check as fans in terms of expectation. Yeah, not – Which is smart. Yeah, not setting the bar too high. I, I yeah. was thinking about this the other day. I, I can't I – just under this regime, I can't see us having another Leroy Fair or a Vadis Ajidja where – we announce a sign and then it turns out they end up failing the medical, you know, under under this yeah. regime, I think. I mean, we're not there now, but I think the ambition is to be a well-oiled machine and, you know, as I said, I'm reiterating, we're making the right steps. Just quickly on the one in, one out, I, I read that to be more financially, so unless it's like a glaring thing like Andrissa Gay where there's no other player for that position, uh, I mm. think it's more a case of if someone who's on 70 grand a week goes out, that means we can go out and start looking at players around that price or lower in wage terms, because that's the, that's the key thing at the minute. I don't think it's a case. And I don't think, um, Dal was probably on very much. I can't imagine he was. So I, I, I think if Schneiderlin <laughs> goes, if Schneiderlin were to go, you'd see a very like the likelihoods of us bringing in another player would shoot up dramatically for me. Uh, more so than any other player, even though he's not a player who immediately needs replacing in the squad, his wages being gone and any money we recoup for him would immediately be give us options. So I think it's yeah. along those lines for me. Yeah, and I I think that makes a lot of sense because I I'm a, I'm under the impression that Schneiderlin's gone, that he is leaving this month. I'm just assuming that. So yeah, I'll be curious to see. I think it's it's the what I'm doing with Bronze comments here is I'm using it as a measuring stick for future windows. You know what I mean? So we can try to figure out what he means when he says these sorts of things. Mm. He doesn't sound like somebody who's just going to straight up lie. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we've sort of made this a lot about Marcel Bronze, but to be honest with you, a lot of the headlines are about Bronze. Mm. There it is. Um, So I guess that's it for our AGM review. There's more to talk about, but... uh, we shouldn't make this a 40 minute segment just saying so yeah so that's it for our agm review that is also our final video segment so uh if you want to catch terry against max in a in a, a quiz an everton quiz uh switch over to the pod because uh, if you know your history is the final segment of the podcast switch to that and you can hear hear how smart these guys are about about everton stuff all right in, in case you don't do that, we're, uh, we'll miss you. Tear. Anyway, if, you dig, uh, if you're digging our videos, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. We'd sincerely appreciate it. Check out the podcast, too, at some point. I did mention it, but I should, mention, I, I should say, listen to it sometimes if you're on the go. Uh, if you want more Terry, he, he had a piece in the Liverpool Echo Fan Jury, so check his Twitter for that. Uh, additionally, check out Max's Twitter. He'll tell you when he's uh, appearing, well, everywhere, but also uh, on the Toffee Blues website. He'll tell you about his, uh, his effort and analysis pieces, his analytical pieces. So check that out. Uh, guys, that's it. Last video. So for the video viewers, bye. But for the rest of you, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.